Riley Davis with Heat Check CBB here, joined by my co-host, Connor Hope, fellow Heat Checker, uh, here to break down Syracuse and LSU for the Sleepers Media YouTube channel. And this was a game going into it. We said that Syracuse had a lot to prove. They had a, I'm not going to say a dismal showing in Maui, definitely disappointing though. You know, they hung with Tennessee for 30 minutes that first game. They completely unraveled and really got punched in the mouth and never recovered against Gonzaga. And this was sort of one of those non-conference matchups you can't really afford to lose if you want to get into the tournament. You know, it's not necessarily going to move the needle. It's probably going to stay a Q a Q2 win, but you at least need some sort of like non-conference win over a, a high major opponent to build confidence, build some momentum going into conference play. So, um, Connor, what was your biggest takeaway for Syracuse in this one? I think it's that they they started off attacking attacking the rim, which is is really what they they needed to do. Um, I know early in that in that game they had twenty nine points, and I think fourteen of them uh, had come from the line. They were just forcing LSU into foul trouble. Judah Mintz, no one could stay in front of him, and so he would get to the rim and get fouled. Um, I think he ended up uh, with. 11 15 free free throws in the game mm-hmm. so but they were 11 of 11 early on uh, attacking the rim really getting at it they were still losing I, and i think i i mentioned this uh, on twitter they were they were still losing the rebounding battle uh in this game heading into the break and um but they had they were blocking shots forcing turnovers lsu really couldn't get anything going and then you get to the second half and attacking the rim, I think, really opened up the floor for the shooters. Neither team shot well in this game. Both were under 40%. But where Syracuse really did make most of its money in this game was 11 for 21 from the three-point line. Both teams took uh, – Syracuse took 21 uh, three-pointers. LSU took 22. Syracuse made 11. LSU made two. So Syracuse scored 27 more points from three, and they won by 23. So uh, it's it was it was kind of flipping the script because you were you were talking about this Syracuse team like they're inefficient scoring. Uh, they can't rebound well. They ended up winning the battle on the boards by seven. They mm-hmm. ended up shooting 52 percent from uh, deep. LSU was playing very physical inside, which is, I think, where Syracuse's lack of interior scoring came from. But again, they got to the line 23 times. So this Syracuse team, I think, proved a lot of people, and they forced 19 turnovers. This Syracuse team proved a lot of people on both ends of the floor, especially in that second half, that they can be a tournament team. Um, they just happened to, to go up against two top 10, top 15 teams in the country in Maui, and uh, this was a really good test for them, a must-win game. But I really liked what I saw in that second half from Syracuse. I think the first half, kind of hard to tell what you liked what you didn't because it was so ugly mm-hmm. um, but that second half when Syracuse really did pull away score 47 points they they proved that their offense can get there yeah like you said that second half was pretty spectacular for the orange to see them bust the lead open to to see you know obviously Judah Mintz in my opinion main story for tonight you know dark horse ACC player of the year career high 33 points you hit on his 15 free throw attempts. You hit on no one being able to to stay in front of him. I just think whenever he gets into the lane, he's nearly unguardable. Like he's either going to finish so strong around the rim or he's going to draw contact. It's one or the other. Um, love seeing Chris Bell emerge as that that second um, that second scoring option alongside Mintz. It was another honestly forgettable game for JJ Starling, which like still waiting to see him put it together. Uh, but Chris Bell was one of those guys. He's a sophomore. A uh, decent recruiting pre- pedigree who you'd want to see break out a little bit. Hitting six threes tonight was huge for a team that uh, coming into the, the evening was shooting 25% from beyond the arc as a team, excluding the game against Chaminade, shooting 25% against D1 competition. Uh, aside from him, it's good to see Justin Taylor. He had a couple threes as well. Um, I, I like the Malik Brown minutes at the five. You know, we, we yeah. didn't shy away from talking about some Naheem McLeod shortcomings in our preview. Um, big body can block some shots, but overall is a little bit susceptible to to points of the basket. And actually a stat that shocks me to see is LSU actually outscored Syracuse in the paint 44 to 28 
and still lost by 23, but you know, that ties into the three, the three point disparity. Um, but yeah, I, I think, um, Malik Brown and McLeod, they had a dead even 2020 split and, you know, maybe that's something Autry continues going forward, but it, it, it seems like to me, you know, eventually what, what Malik Brown can give you from an athleticism and just a physicality perspective, um, and just more like refined offensively than McLeod, I expect to see that eventually at least get to like a 25 15 split for the five spot. Yeah. McLeod had the three blocks. I think all of them came in the first half, Mm -hmm. Um, but he was two of seven from the floor. Couldn't really get anything going. Malik Brown led the team in rebounds. He had five offensive four on the defensive end, nine rebounds, seven points on four shots. Very efficient. Didn't, didn't need to take a ton to, to make a difference. Didn't have the the same amount of shot blocks, but forced two turnovers on steals. Uh, so I think Brown eventually usurps McLeod in this starting mm-hmm. lineup. Uh, maybe you keep McLeod there as the you know tip off guy at seven four, and, right? And play him in the in the starting three to five minutes. But in terms of the minutes they get, we should see more Malik Brown than we do. Nahima Cloud going forward. I mm-hmm. think he just tonight proved he can be more impactful uh, than McLeod has been over the first seven games of the season. Yeah. And again, I, I want to, he's a, he's a sophomore as well. And, you know, that's, that's the hope alongside, again, we, we talked about this in the preview, you know, the, the recipe for success, Mintz and Starling becoming one of the better backcourts in the nation. Mintz is already there as one of the, the top league guards you're going to see in this sport. Um, but it's, those aren't the only two sophomores. We mentioned Bell. We mentioned Malik Brown as well. Uh, and there's also Quadir, Quadir Copeland, excuse me if I mispronounced that. But yeah, you have these, oh, and Justin Taylor, another sophomore. Like you have these guys who are starting to, you know, you want to see make that second year leap to get into their groove more. And um, with McLeod, I know he's still pretty raw. I think he was a Juco guy, um, but he's still been in this, been playing the sport for this is his his third year of D1 basketball. It just seems like maybe there's still more untapped upside with Brown um, that I'd like to see Syracuse continue to try to tap into and unleash a little bit. Yeah, and then for LSU, Trey Hannibal was a complete net negative in this game, in my opinion. Um, Came in five turnovers, which, granted, Jordan Wright also had four. Uh, as a senior, but his turnover rate this season hasn't been nearly as high. He hasn't had nearly the same issues that that Hannibal has. I mean, Hannibal is playing spot bench minutes, uh, 17 minutes a game, and he had three turnovers against Dayton to one assist, two turnovers against North Texas to no assists, and then today uh, five turnovers to three three assists, I believe, in in 17 Mm -hmm. minutes. Um, I understand he is – he and Jordan – need to be better for this LSU team to win because Mike Williams, he had his four, but he's also a freshman. Um, And a pretty unheralded one at that. Right. So when you put him next to a senior in Jordan Wright or or a senior in Trey Hannibal, you're expecting them to to hold down the four and and to have nine of the team's 19 uh, turnovers and, and only... I mean, they had half their assists, but LSU only had eight assists tonight. Like, you need to be better uh, as senior guards because eventually it's going to lead to to some issues. Mm-hmm. Also, I just said Mike Williams was unheralded. He was a top one hundred, a top top one hundred and twenty kid. I know LSU fans are locked in on Jaden Daniels' uh, Heisman campaign right now, so they're probably not going to chirp at me. But I had to clarify that. I just did my research. Um, but yeah, t- to your point with Jordan Wright. I feel like he's kind of the guy who the the idea of Jordan Wright is better than the player. Um, six mm-hmm. six wing who's supposed to be pretty versatile. But yet, you know, he's leading this team in usage right now. He was second on Vanderbilt in, in usage last year, and Vandy was still an NIT team. Um, which granted, this LSU, LSU's outlook looks pretty bleak. Like if they made the NIT, that would be a successful season. But eventually you gotta, I don't know, you gotta show some sort of progress, especially just coming off the the Will Wade era where he wasn't perfect and obviously had his off the court issues that are now legal. That wouldn't even be that big of a deal. Um, 
but you know, he was getting them to the tournament every year and that's the expectation for Matt McMahon. And <laughs> don't think it's going to happen this year. No, no. And the one bright spot I will say for, for this LSU team, Jalen Reed played pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, six of 10 from the floor two of two from the line. He had a double, double, uh, you know, just one foul. Um, and I know, you know, between him and, and, and Jordan, Wright, That's 12 of 15 shots that this starting five made. Um, so, uh, Jalen Reed's been playing pretty good this year. And, and I think this is just, this is kind of, showing what he can do especially when will baker uh, is struggling mm-hmm. down low 